Now, let's try to have uh, some understanding regarding the over-the-counter markets. For derivatives, this is uh, one of the two major modes of trading. One being uh, the organized exchanges, the other one being the over-the-counter kind of markets. And uh, <clears throat> exchange is a physical location which is acting as an intermediary between the market between the buyers and the sellers. Whereas in over-the-counter, there is not any kind of a recognized exchange. The trades are generally over the telephone between the various participants and majority of the participants in the over-the-counter market uh, transactions are the banks and the buying and selling deals are negotiated between both the buyer and the seller. So, they are more and more customized, not standardized kind of deals between the parties. And they are executed over the telephone itself. So, no intermediary or no central marketplace, no standardization of the products when we bring in the over-the-counter market. And uh, majorly or close to 100% or 100% of the forward contracts, they happen over the counter and even the swap contracts, they also happen over the counter only, right? And uh, to some extent, some types of options called as the exotic options we see that they are handled over the counter only, right? Majority of the financial transactions today, they happen over the counter. So if I have to really do a comparison, the OTC market is much, much greater compared to the exchange traded derivatives market across the world, right? And uh, as I said, the forwards and the swaps are the instruments which are 100% dealt over the counter itself. And here the advantage is more and more of customization or what we call as tailor making. So the banks are designing wide varieties of derivatives products to suit the needs of their customers. And because of heavy amount of customization, it becomes very difficult to market these products because it's a niche requirement of each individual customer. So marketability becomes much, much weaker with this. The liquidity, if I really want to get out of this contract, it becomes very difficult for me to find out some other party who can take my position. The transparency, the prices and all are not uh, published anywhere. So that it more of customization between the parties. So the transparency is much, much weaker. And along with that, I can also talk about the credit risk. So the exchange, because the exchange is not present, the concept of margin, the clearing house acting as a counterparty to all the trades, those things do not exist, which means the chance that one party will default is much higher in case of any over-the-counter uh, uh, over based transactions. And uh, because the, the volumes are not that heavy for a single trade, the, the transaction costs or the dealing costs are much, much higher compared to that of the traditional exchange based contracts like your futures and the market wise the codes market codes and all they are traditionally not available which means the transparency is lacking in these kind of markets but still the market is much much bigger because of the customization because of the negotiation that these kind of contracts typically bring it. 
right so that's the so that's the way these two contracts need to be looked at right now just to uh, understand forwards is a one powerful contract where the agreement between the two parties to buy or sell something at a future date right this date itself can be customized and for a price which would be paid on that date but is agreed upon today the quality quantity all other terms of the contract are decided today but the actual settlement happens at a future date right it's a privately negotiated contract between the buyer and the seller so we will uh, uh, i mean on a broader scale that's a simplified way of defining a forward contract and when i have to look at the most powerful instrument that is having a major market share today the swap here it's a simple agreement between the two parties over the counter and this agreement is about exchanging a series of cash flows right over a particular time period let's say over a two year period we will exchange cash flows at the beginning of every quarter on 1st jan 1st april 1st july 1st september or 1st october of every year for the next two years we will exchange a set of cash flows and what cash flow needs to be exchanged it can be decided at the beginning of the contract itself a formula can be designed uh, an agreement can be designed saying okay you pay me a 8% interest on a notional principal of 1 million dollars every quarter whereas uh, b will pay whatever is the floating rate of interest that is floating rate of interest whatever let's say is uh, the borrowing rate some kind of a rate which is changing so uh, that percentage of that same notional amount will be paid by b to a so this is an agreement that could be done between the two parties that uh, every quarter they will exchange cash flows as per this particular formula for a period of 2 years and these kind of deals are generally uh, negotiated by the banks so between the banks these kind of deals typically happen so that is where we call banks are the market makers in these kind of agreements right and the most common products in the swap market is the interest rate swap as well as the currency swap when i talk about the interest rate swap just like the example which i have mentioned about one party will make uh, let's say a fixed interest over a period whereas the other party will make a payment based on the floating rate of interest that is prevailing at that particular point in time so over the entire two year period the payments are exchanged in this particular manner there could be a different motive for each of these things but just to understand the product this is what is an interest rate swap is similarly when i talk about a currency swap one party would like to make a payment in dollars and the other party would like to make a payment in indian rupees so different currencies are exchanged based on a predetermined formula itself and this entire exchange could be for 2 years 5 years 10 years and in some cases it could be even for much more longer periods like 20 years 30 years as well so this is one powerful instrument which has a lot of market share which has quite a variety of uh, variants that are uh, that are prevailing in each of the products Uh, in uh, uh, the different kinds of varieties of swaps that are prevalent in the market so understanding of the swaps is very much essential for us and apart from that the otc market also holds quite a good number of derivative products 
right those are the derivative instruments here i call them as derivative products which are like a packages wherein let's say if i am talking about a guaranteed equity it's a product guaranteed equity product which says right i can i can uh, very well uh, talk about i'll provide a return which is more in line with an equity index right i'll provide a return which is in line with an equity index so if the equity index increases your return also would be like this let's say today uh, some uh, uh, nifty i'm tracking as an equity index today let's say the nifty is 8000 now tomorrow if it goes to 8400 or probably uh, at the end of one period it goes to 8400 which means there is a 5% jump now when there is right um, now when there is a 5% jump all i am saying is i would be paying you a 5% on some notional let's say 1 million at the end of this particular period now from 8400 let's say it touches 9000 in the next period so probably uh, let's say that is again another 6% jump what i'll say is in the next period i'll pay you 6% on the top of 1 million which mean the payment that you are receiving is in line with the equity index but at the same time the next period it falls from 9000 to 8900 probably let's say it's a 1% drop this is where here i can set the minimum is 0% some minimum i can very well set which mean there is a protection that is coming up even if the index is falling i am not going to lose that much i am still protected because i am not receiving anything but i am not losing anything at all so these kind of instruments can very well be created structured and sold to the investor base so these are some of the products that are very heavily prominent on the otc markets not just the traditional derivatives these are like a combination of derivative probably if i look at this product per se it looks as if uh, i am taking this along with a put option which will protect me if the price has fallen below the market price if the, the previously agreed upon price if the fall, price has fallen below that i'm I, i can very well expire that kind of an option so it looks as if i have gone with a combination of a put option with an investment that is tracking the nifty index so that kind of package which otherwise are called as my structured kind of products which are packaged like this to provide some kind of benefit or to provide the some kind of an instrument where a buying and selling can happen right the total returns can very well be linked to some kind of an underlying asset some combination can very well be created and those kind of products can be offered in the market as well just like the way we have looked at the guaranteed equity kind of a product and we could see wide varieties of structured notes which are providing more or less similar kind of an effect it's just like a guaranteed equity product so where the structuring they are not standard contracts the structuring is being done to meet the requirements of some specific group of investors right so uh, the cash flows the cash inflows and cash outflows are very comfortably structured so as to meet the requirements of a specific investor for example if i say okay i am creating a bond i am having a bond but that bond will have some kind of an option packaged into it probably called as a callable bond when i say a callable bond 
Okay, it's a regular bond. But there is an option that is available for the issuer of the bond that whenever he wants to buy back the bond, he will buy it back at a specified price. So, he will try to buy it when it is an advantage for him to buy. So, there is an option that is coming in. Similarly, I can talk about a puttable bond where I am issuing, there is a traditional bond itself but packaged with a kind of a put option. The put option will give an additional right to the investor that whenever he wants to sell off the bond, he can sell it at a predefined kind of a price. So it gives a benefit to the investor. Or like that, we have a kind of a convertibility option, which is like wherever uh, the investor wants, he can convert that bond into an equity of that particular company. Right? Or uh, in some cases, it is very much possible that I can link the coupon payment of a bond, which is like a floating rate bond. The coupon payment can very well be linked to an exchange rate or probably a equity index or a property index. So depending on how that particular uh, how that particular index is moving, the payments on the bond are also moving more or less in the same way. So some kind of an indirect exposure can come to the property markets or equity markets even through the bond or even through the exchange rate markets as well. So this kind of uh, instruments can very well be created. Whenever we talk about the structured products, the very common thing that comes out is a traditional product plus some kind of option that is embedded into it can create a kind of a structured product, right? Or sometimes we call it, we call as a commodity swap, okay? It's actually, probably if I look at it, it's like this. I will pay you the return on a particular commodity and you pay me a fixed rate of return. But if I look at it in detail, it is nothing but, I can call it as a structured notes also. Whatever the return that the commodity is giving, I am paying you that return during a particular period. And whatever is a fixed interest bond, whatever is the return that it is giving, you pay me that one. So I can very well structure every swap as a combination of two or more different kinds of bonds as well. So every, every swap which is not very traditional in nature, I can look at it as a structured product wherein I am trying to build it using two or more different financial instruments. But the moment I add options to it, it becomes a even more, even more tricky kind of a product. Cash flow payouts differ significantly, requires a good amount of understanding to evaluate the product further. Right? So, there are all these kinds of instruments are traded typically over the counter itself. While only the futures, futures and some kind of options, these are the ones today that are traded over the exchange. Whereas all the forwards, swaps, different kinds of derivative products, structured products, they are all dealt over the counter itself. So understanding of the different kinds of derivative products is very much essential for us. And that is what uh, is typically being looked at as a part of this session. All right.